Hello, and welcome to the reference interview. My name is Paul Steensland, and I'll be your host for today. Our guest is Frank Alanese. Frank is an experienced program developer, facilitator, and veteran who has a wealth of knowledge in workforce development. He has facilitated various training programs co covering topics such as virtual conferencing software, resume development, and LinkedIn profile organization. Frank is passionate about employing, I'm sorry, empowering veterans and is considered a subject matter expert on veteran, veteran hiring trends in the St. Louis area. If you want to connect with Frank, you can find him on LinkedIn at linkedin.com slash in, that's I-N, slash Frank Alanese. Frank, thanks for joining us. Well, thank you for having me. I really appreciate you inviting me in today. Well, glad to have you. Um, my first question was going to be about unemployment in St. Louis, but during our conversation in the virtual green room, I realized that we need to clarify for the audience what is unemployment and how how is it measured? Well, that's a great question because I think as we were talking earlier, 99% of the people don't understand how this process works. Um, we need to understand that the BLS, Bureau of Labor Standards, um, our statistics conducts a survey monthly uh, around the entire United States. Uh, and what they do is they determine who's employed, who's unemployed, and then the latest term that's coming out is who are the discouraged workers. And the discouraged workers meaning they a person who's given up finding a job. Now, let me kind of, again, step back here and let you know that if you're employed, the government knows, you know, and, and really so does Google, but <laughs> that's another story. But the government knows that you're employed because your employer's paying wages on you. Number two is if you have lost your job through no fault of your own or for whatever reason, and you apply for unemployment benefits, state benefits, so here in Missouri, uh, unemployment insurance benefits through the state, then you're counted as unemployed. Everybody else, so you could be like myself, uh, I'm retired, or you're a caregiver, uh, or possibly a student, then you're not considered employed. You're not considered unemployed as well. So the numbers can be a little bit misleading because you could fall into that discouraged workers. In other words, you, you've gone through your unemployment benefits, the, the weekly benefits, you've exhausted those benefits, and there may or may not be extended benefits. I'm not sure if that's still the case. Um, but it just means now you have left the workforce, the formal term of how the government uh, uh, declares you as an individual. So it's not that bad of a deal to be a discouraged worker. I'm a discouraged worker, you know, uh, because I'm retired. And, uh, but makes sense. I, I, yeah, we just need to understand that when you hear that in the metro area, a regional unemployment rate of 3.2%, it, it's those people who are unemployed based on the that government's term or the state's term or whoever's term, unemployed based on the number of jobs available. Now, we also need to consider too, when we hear that number, we are based on the metro area, which includes St. Louis City, St. Louis County, St. Charles County, Jefferson and Franklin counties. All right, so when you hear that, you know, the, the St. Louis unemployment rate, it's a pretty broad area. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. So we're recording is on August 8th of 2023, and I checked the national average, which was 3.5. You're saying that uh, the St. Louis metro area is 3.2, so we're actually doing a little better, would you say, in terms of our unemployment? 
Yes and no, because if we took a look just at the city, their unemployment rate's a little bit higher than St. Charles County. But the average in our metro area, yes, 3.2% uh, is based on our regional or our metro area. Um, we had, and, I, and I, this was at the end of July, 35,174 individuals who were termed unemployed in the metro area. It seems like a lot, but we had we have a little over a, a, a million ten uh, individuals who are employable in the metro area too. So if we take a look at that, three point two percent is a, a very good rate. But again, remember the discouraged workers out there. And is there a way to measure them? There. Anecdotally, yes. The, the state measures them. They, they, if we look at the Merrick data, which is the um, Missouri Economic Research and Information Center, they are our numbers crunchers for economic development issues uh, here in Missouri. They do track as many of those people as possible. Now, is it a good number? Is it a true number? It's the best number they can come up with. So does that increase our unemployment rate? maybe a percentage or so, uh, but based on my, what I just read this morning um, on Merrick, that's my best guesstimate. And so um, if you really wanna get down and dirty, if you go to merrick.mo.gov, um, there is a ton of, of information um, about across the state of Missouri, but if you wanna just central in centralize into St. Louis area, by all means, you can find a wealth of information. Well, that sounds good. That's a that's a resource that I have to admit, I don't use as much as I probably should. I, I am in the same boat. I, I, look, I look at all the each week. Uh, I get a monthly BLS uh, email telling me what's going on nationally. But I, you know, I, I should be looking more and more at the region as well. So I, I'm, a, I'm standing there with you, Paul. <laughs> we, we talk a lot about unemployed people, but what about underemployed people, people that may be working in a job that they think isn't right for them or they want a better job? Uh, is there, is, first of all, is there a way to measure those sorts of people? And then second of all, how would how would we as a library or we as a community help folks like that in that situation? Well, it, it's kind of hard because again, if we look at statistically the data that's being provided to us, again, through BLS or through Merrick, um, they are being counted, but they're being counted in, in a different way. Um, I have a gentleman that we both know who is underemployed, uh, but if we were to take a look at the data, he's employed um, because of how data is collected. But um, as of March 2023, and this is the latest update that I could find, we had a total of 97,330 job postings in the metro area which is fabulous, with 71% of those jobs being permanent full-time. Again, a fabulous. How can we help those individuals, whether it's a resource like the library or resources with the groups that I belong to? I think it's a word of mouth. Getting people to understand that um, there are opportunities out there and educating them on how to find those opportunities. Well, that's and something think, something we do in the library, certainly, and uh, and I, I know you do the same thing. Yes, absolutely. It's a process. Exactly. Every career mm -hmm. coach that I've ever spoken to just says network, network, network when it comes yes. to you know how how do people find jobs, and that and that that was going to be my next question is how are how are people finding work these days? Is it is it how is it the same methods that we used five or even 20 years ago or is new technology sort of giving us new ways to find work or how 
how are jobs being filled these days? Well, how are they being filled? That, that's a different subject. And we'll get into that towards the end of, of my little talk here. Um, how people are looking for a job. 20 years ago, literally, they would walk up to a business, knock on the door with their resume, ask to see a manager, hopefully get an interview, uh, or at least get their resume in front of the right person to have a conversation with. And in and, and many cases, started work on Monday. Um, about 10, uh, probably 15 years ago, the online application process was introduced by a lot of large companies, more, mainly Fortune 500 companies. Um, and so jobs were being not necessarily harder to find, they were always there. The problem is, is now people had to, to go click, 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 click to find a job. So they were looking, they were going to Monster and Career Builder and other job boards. And now, uh, in today's world, about 98% of the jobs are online somewhere, um, whether on a job board such as Indeed or LinkedIn uh, or on the local church bulletin board, uh, which are now virtual, you know. Um, I did a, a program with a local church and they said, well, we have a job board too, and gave me the link to their job board. And, you know, their community posts jobs there. Um, and, uh, and I was really appreciative and I, I spread the word. Um, so right now people are going online. However, as you alluded earlier, the number one way to get a job has been and always will be networking. You know, it's not uh, back when I started as a workforce uh, program person. We were taught to find, use the person's skills to help them get a job. And then about 15 years ago, it was not who or what you knew, but who you knew. So we were starting to make inroads into employers to make those connections. And today it's not what you know, it's not who you know, it's who you are connected to. And if we look at all of the media that's out there, whether you're on LinkedIn or whether you're on Facebook or whether you're on TikTok or, or any of the other media centers out there, it's all about those connections and the followers uh, out there. And that's you know uh, how people are finding those opportunities right now. But, um, Post-pandemic or pre-pandemic, people were using the job boards. When the pandemic rolled in, um, those three years of lost time, <laughs> you know, yeah, um, people were still getting on job boards. Um, so they were using job boards more and more and more. And um, again, the, the job process is virtually online for I'm going to say as much as 98% of the jobs out there. Wow. So, Did not know that. And, and it's, you know, we have employers that only post on their website. Um, so they're not going to spread it out to major job boards. We have employers who use job boards plus their own website. Uh, and then we have employers that, um, small employers, the most essential, you know, when when we talk employers, and, and I, I don't remember if you were part of this survey we did about 10 years ago, where we ask everybody, if you could pick the top 10 employers you want to work for, who would it be? And out of all the responses, we got A, B, Nestle, Boeing, the top 10 employers, and none of the small to mid-sized employers were listed at all. And so I think that's what we see now as well. How can we improve that? And it's just knowledge base right now. Um, I recently attended a career fair um, with 40 plus employers there and, and I tried to meet every employer. And I asked, you know, where are your jobs? Where can I find your jobs? And 100% it was online. 
Um, we had one small company there that was taking paper applications. Oh, wow. Um, but you couldn't leave. You had to fill out the application there. Okay. And 99% um, of the people were not. They were all going, well, can I just do this online? And they were going, yes, of course. But if you'd like to fill this out now, you're more than welcome, but you can't leave with it. So, you know, drawbacks here, drawbacks there. So, yeah, that makes sense. You, yeah. you mentioned um, when folks are surveyed who they'd like to work for, they mentioned the large companies, perhaps because they're at the top of folks' mind. Uh, a lot of people may not realize that the St. Louis County Library has resources such as reference solutions, which can help you find many companies within a certain industry, for instance, if you want to find uh, jobs in uh, pet stores, just as a for, for example, we've got a database that will give you all of the pet stores in uh, in St. Louis or any other type of company that you'd like to find. So uh, if you're only looking at the large companies, there may be smaller and medium sized companies that you might be missing. Absolutely. And I can attest to that because uh, uh, last year, I think it was, um, I used your database and the information in that database to get a job, uh, to prove my bona fides to an employer. Um, and they were amazed at the type of information that I could retrieve from the library and they had no clue. Uh, and so absolutely. I think the best kept secret in St. Louis really are the library system. So whether you're in St. Louis County, city, St. Charles, wherever you're gonna be, the resources there are phenomenal. Well, thank you for saying that, Frank. Mm -hmm. you, One more thing, sure. everybody talks about the hidden job market. And about five years ago, that was one of my spills. 80% of the jobs are not posted online where you can find them. I'm talking about the job seeker. And today's world, um, I would say that number is roughly, let me see, 40% oh, of the jobs are not posted. Mm -hmm. And it could be, it's probably a little bit higher than that. Why? Because most employers now are hiring internally before they post the job out. Second, they are looking for referrals. So again, it's not what you know, who you know, but who you're connected to. And so um, having those referrals, and we have a lot of companies in the metro area still pay bonuses. So if I referred you, Paul, to the company that I'm working with and you picked up a job, I would get a hiring bonus once you got hired. And so, you know, that's wonderful for a lot of companies and it, it keeps you, me, of course, with a little bit of green money in my pocket, but most importantly, you as the job seeker come highly recommended because most people are not gonna stick their neck out for somebody that's only gonna do a half job. You know, they're going to want to make sure that they make me, you make me look good for that referral. So, again, right now we have to look at, when you look at that Indeed, and I, and I ran these numbers in, on Indeed this morning, there was over 1.7 million jobs in the St. Louis metro area. Now, we know that's not necessarily the case. Uh, and it's probably closer to, you know, somewhere between 80 and 100,000 jobs in the metro area. Um, so you need to take that information with a grain of salt. Um, and then again, look smarter at job opportunities, not harder. You know, Makes sense. Um, and both of you and I run into this a lot where we've talked to a job seeker and they go, there's no jobs out there. You know, I go on Indeed every morning and go click, 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 and I see the same jobs over and over. And, uh, um, and again, that's working not so smart and working harder. Well, and it, very often we get job hunters who come in who really don't have a strategy. 
Right. They don't have a process for what the various steps are of looking for a job and then where to do the research and how to write a proper resume and how to network. And that's that's something that I know you do as a career coach, but we also have resources here at the library that can help you do all of that. It's not just the research side, it's creating a resume. We have we have resources that uh, will offer you a resume coach online that will help you create a resume from nothing. We've got uh, resources that can help you learn how to network better. And I know that's that's something that folks told me and have told me post COVID is that the COVID lockdown, the, the three years you mentioned, a lot of folks say that they lost some of the networking skills, the face-to-face, uh, you know, do you shake a hand? Do you touch elbows? Uh, just some of the, 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 the interpersonal communication skills that go into face-to-face networking. Absolutely. And, you know, um, post-COVID job stra- search strategy has changed a lot. And again, online, but more importantly, the employers are using a different strategy to find the best quality. Notice I didn't say qualified, quality candidates, uh, which is similar, but a little bit different. I've had so many people who we, who have indicated that they meet this job 100%, uh, sit there and go click, 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 and no response, nothing from the employer. And I don't want to say they're ghosted, because nine times out of 10, they didn't complete the application correctly. Okay, but again, different story. The the thing is though, you're absolutely right. If they had made that connection with the employer, if they had started networking with the employer, networking with the recruiter, when they submitted their application, there's a great possibility that that would have been a referral. And then that referral would have led it at 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 least to an interview where they would have the capability of selling themselves. Um, I met a young person uh, at the career fair and that person was just wandering. And I said, so I stopped them, I introduced them myself. And I said, well, you know, you've been here for about 30 minutes, you haven't talked to anybody. He goes, well, I, I don't know what to do. And I said, come with me. And we walked up to an employer and I introduced myself and I gave my 11 and a half second elevator speech. And uh, the employer started talking and uh, to me. And um, the employer said, you know, I, Frank, I, I'm not sure if there's anything we can do for you. And I said, no, I, I completely understand. Um, however, let me introduce you to this gentleman right here. I think, you know, and I turned around this guy was surprised, he shook some hands, and after about five minutes, I walked away. And hopefully he made an entirely great um, connection with that employer, and hopefully he will get moved down the road. So you're absolutely right, COVID has shut things down. I, and I'm not sure the total casual look, um, the young lady that showed up with house slippers and pajama bottoms and a big oversized shirt and, you know, a handful of, you know, resumes and looking for a job. I'm not sure that's in today's world, but apparently there was multiple people like that at the the event as well. I I hope they found employment too. I, I I certainly do at the same time. Absolutely. Um, We've seen and we've heard in the news a lot of layoffs, national layoffs, a lot of large companies, uh, companies that haven't ever laid off in the past have laid off. And I think it's just a shift, um, like anything, you know, when we see the price of gas go up and then go down, it's just a correction. And I think um, uh, employers overhired dear, for, in a lot of cases during COVID uh, because of the strange way we were conducting business at home uh, versus in office. 
Uh, and I think we're just correcting some of that. Now, how has that affected St. Louis? Um, I think only time will tell. We still have a lot of great jobs out there if you can find them. The problem is, are you looking correctly? And you and I have had this conversation using your resources and my resources, and sometimes we can help and sometimes we can't. There's still a process to look for a job. More importantly, there's a process to apply for a job and you have to do it correctly. Otherwise, you're gonna say, well, there's no jobs out there. And um, a gentleman was online and he was complaining he had applied for 400 jobs in the last year and no response. So I you know, responded, I commented on his post and I said, so did you customize your resume at least 400 times for each of those jobs? And he goes, no, I just sent the resume I got out of college that they made for me at my university. <coughs> boy, oh boy. I said, well, there's your problem. You know. Yeah, I noticed a lot of layoffs in the IT sector. Yeah. Uh, Companies, Google, Facebook, Twitter was was very hmm. famous for uh, for all the layoffs that uh, that happened there. Do you see that sector rehiring, or do you see those that that downsizing being more of a permanent fixture within that industry? Um, I see those people being picked up left and right. Um, most IT folks that are their skills are current and up to date. You know, I've been in IT. For forever. And every employer that I've ever met with has told me, if you're embedded in, an, uh, in a job for three years or longer, your skills are obsolete. And uh, because, again, you're embedded to that employer, you haven't kept up. Now, if you've kept up your credentials over that three or four years that you were with that employer, then that makes it better. You know, I have 15 IT credentials. Now, they're from the 1800s, but, you know, they're IT credentials nonetheless. Um, could I get a job today in the IT world? Possibly. But I would literally have to get through the application process, get through the recruiter screening, and have the capability to sit down with the hiring manager to talk about what I bring to the table. But if I were just to apply for a job without all of that networking in place, would my resume make it through the process? No. So, uh, even so in, go ahead. So even in fairly broad sectors like IT, even with the right credentials, without a job hunting strategy, without the necessary credentials, it's still going to be tough. Absolutely. And and if we look across the board, it's getting, I, I'm not going to say it's getting tougher. And, and I don't know if the job seekers are, are getting discouraged um, or if they are, are just assuming I filled out one application, I can fill them all out the same. Um, in our recent recruiting strategy or our get together, um, uh, what number one problem we have as a career, like if you went to a career event, um, was the um, elevator speech. And what we found is after about 30 to 45 seconds, most recruiters have tuned you out especially if you're fumbling and not getting it. Second piece of the puzzle is when you apply online and you spend two hours filling in the blanks and you push submit, statistically, 80% of the people who apply online are eliminated in the first 10 minutes of the application process. Why? Their resume. You know, I've talked to recruiters from Google, I've talked to recruiters from Amazon, I've talked recruiters from uh, locally uh, and their number one concern one number one problem has always been that people that go well I apply for a job online and they don't see them because one they didn't do it correctly two their resume didn't parse correctly 
um, um, we have to rethink our dynamics on and on how we look for a job. You know, every morning I wake up and I have an uh, email from Google showing me jobs that I'm interested in, okay, that are less than three days old, okay? Sometime in the afternoon, I get an email from LinkedIn with jobs that I'm interested in that are less than three days old. So you're not going to find me on a job board going click, 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 click. I wonder what jobs are out there. I customize my search and then have those search results emailed to me. So that way I can scroll through this morning. I got 72 jobs from Google. So all I needed to do was stroll, scroll through those jobs click on the one that I felt that I was interested in and then make a determination on whether I should move forward or not. You know, and that's the easiest, simplest thing to do. Well, and if anyone in the audience is interested in learning how to do this, you can contact Frank directly, but you can also look at some of Frank's videos that he's done for the St. Louis County Library. Yeah, you can find those on the library's YouTube channel. Uh, we did those uh, a few years ago, but I think they're, uh, in terms of the, the strategies that Frank lays out, still valid for 2023. Absolutely. Absolutely. So Frank, we, we hear a lot about artificial intelligence. And a, a lot of what we hear is sensationalistic and uh, Big Brother and HAL 9000 and uh, Skynet type of, uh, type of references, but can artificial intelligence and ChatGPT and BARD help us in our job search? Absolutely. They can help. Now, are they the end-all, be-all solution? Absolutely not. First of all, I need to caution everybody. Never put personal identification information, PII, into one of those chatbots, right? Why? Because they're open source. When you put your name, address, telephone number into ChatGTP or to BARD, someone actually physically looks at that information. Now, hopefully it's the the monitors of the system, but as we've seen across the not so much. So uh, my recommendation is to leave all personal information off. Now, employers are starting to look at AI as well. They have incorporated in their job seeker outreach. So in their online applications or applicant tracking systems, they are incorporating it. Um, they are uh, using more and more AI to develop hiring strategies. Um, and so it's going to be a different world in the near future. Right now it's in its infancy. A lot of people are playing or thinking about playing or going, I'm never going to do that. Uh, one of the things that I was, I recently did a, a workshop on on AI and on for resume development. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. But I, I had a comment from an employer that says that's cheating. People should not allow, be allowed to use AI to write their resume. And you know, many years ago, more years than I care to remember, I got certified as a resume writer and employers here in St. Louis said, that's cheating because you're not giving the job seekers voice you're using your voice to write the resume. And I said, so we don't like resume writers. And I said, well, that's okay. I don't want to be a resume writer anyway, but you know, this, this, that's the thing. It what goes around, it comes around. Yeah. I remember, so, I remember librarians were very fearful of the internet when it first came out yes. until we realized again, that this was, when I was becoming a librarian in the, mm -hmm. well, earlier um, in history, uh, there, there was a great deal of concern over the internet and what it put librarians out of jobs. And what mm -hmm. we realized was the internet was a, another tool that we can use 
to help people find information. And mm -hmm. just because somebody has access to the internet doesn't mean that they don't require people like librarians to help them use the tool to find the information they need. I agree 100%. You know, I think both you and I grew up in the area of the Dewey Decimal System and, and the cards and, and looking for, when I was in college, I would go to the library and, and, and dig through the card stacks, trying to find the best reference. And I, I still do that, but I do it virtually. Yeah. Um, you know, and the data is still there. It may be, I don't think it's easier to find, but it's more robust because not only did I find one versus just having one card that I, that I was able to pull from, now I have a card and you as a library recommends a ton more information for me as that researcher that I can rely on. So absolutely, the internet is scary for a lot of people and I agree, but then again, uh, with your job and my job, the internet has become a great resource for us as well. Well, and I see artificial intelligence the same way is it's, it's a tool and mm -hmm. we need people like you to show us how to use this tool in order to improve our chances of getting a job. And that's that's really a, uh, a setup for my uh, my last statement, I guess, about um, about our artificial intelligence is uh, Frank is going to be doing a workshop on using artificial intelligence to increase your chances of getting a job. He's going to be doing this on September 25th, 2023 at 7 p.m. at our Thornhill branch. So I would encourage anyone having a look at this to either apply for that program, register for the program, uh, see Frank in action, see him live. Uh, we're also going to be simulcasting this virtually so that if you are at home, you'll be able to watch watch it well as well as join in, ask questions, and the program will be recorded. So folks will be able to check it out on the County Library's YouTube channel. And I appreciate the opportunity to uh, meet with your community and offer this resource. And uh, I think AI is here to stay and it's gonna, as in anything, you'll have the, the GM, Ford and, uh, you know, uh, classics, and then you will have the up and coming start people that will either last or not last. Um, um, I actually built my own chatbot that I use personally. Um, and we'll probably talk a little bit about that um, and how you can do it if you, if you understand Python and, you know, uh, a couple of other resources. Um, but you'll be amazed at what this information can do for you. And then my recommendation is you use it as, a, as an additional resource um, along with the library as your primary resource and then this moving you forward in your job search strategy. Well, I look forward to joining you for that program. Frank, do you have any final comments for us? Um, I, again, I want to thank you for allowing me to speak today. Um, my recommendation is to look at three places. One, if you're interested in following up on the AI, uh, not the AI, but the uh, data that we talked about earlier, please go to merrick.mo.gov, and um, there's a wealth of information. We have two locations that are kind of a hidden job market that most people don't take advantage of. Number one is the Missouri Career Centers. Um, they offer a ton of resources. You don't have to be unemployed. You can be underemployed or even overemployed um, to utilize those services. Um, so I would reach out. And again, if you go to mo.gov, you can find the closest Missouri Career Center to you. On the flip side, if we walk across the street or across the river to our Illinois partners, uh, IDES, um, Illinois Department of Employment Security, uh, .gov, uh, or .il, I think. 
I'm not sure. Just look up IDES. And then they have the same resources, but on the Illinois side as Missouri does. So I want to again, thank you so much. If you have any questions, you can find me on LinkedIn. Follow me, please, on LinkedIn. You don't necessarily have to connect. But if you follow me, you'll see all the bunch of re all the resources that I produce every month. Well, thank you for joining us, Frank. And I'd like to thank all of you in the audience for joining us today for the reference interview. My name is Paul, and have a great rest of your day. All right. Thank you.